what you would do. Here's what you would do. I, I honestly don't I have any clue what to do with the money. But I know a guy who does. This gentleman also happens to be Steve Larson and Russell Brunson's money guy. He's got all the accolades, right? He's got uh, the accounting and REI, and he's done Wall Street and investing in hedge funds and I don't know, all the, you know, all the other letters and stuff like that. But here's the thing, none of that is important. What is important is this, is that he has the only financial strategy and system out there created by and for entrepreneurs like us. Yes? Is it okay with you if I bring him to the stage and he shares with you what to do with your money so that you can keep it and grow it? Is that okay? Let me ask you one more time. Is that okay? Well, if it's okay, put your hands together and make some noise for Mr. Bradley. Yeah! So I, I'm going to go through, can I bring my slides up there? I'm going to go through a couple of things here. Um, yes, I, I have the accolades. I'm a super nerd and I study accounting, economics, and statistics. I spent time on Wall Street. I took companies public. I managed a hedge fund. I, I did some of those fun things. I've also been very fortunate to work with some pretty amazing people. I've been in Russell's inner circle for four years. And by the way, like this event, I am so pissed right now. I spent four years sifting through the information in the inner circle for this. Seriously, like if I wrote down everything I learned from the inner circle, it would have been, Russell, it would have been this first whole day's presentation. So you guys just got a cheat code and you got passed to the front of the line, okay? Um, I've been able to have some amazing coaches had some cool opportunities to, to work with amazing people, um, be part of some, some very powerful networks, got invited to speak on a, a pretty big stage um, and talk about what I really truly love, which is money. <laughs> okay, but I'm gonna explain why that's okay in a minute and not like totally egocentric in just a minute, but that's not, who I am, that's not who my business partner Ryan or my business partner Jimmy, that's not who we are. What money, this is what money represents for me. It's the things that I get to do, it's what money allows me to do, it's the life that I'm able to build, okay? These are, my, these are four, yeah, there's four in that picture, four of my soon to be six uh, beautiful kids. Roasting marshmallows is a very serious thing at our house, so we wear protection. Um, <laughs> I have the cutest two little daughters on the planet. This, this is what it's about for me. This is why I'm passionate about what I do is I wanna help people understand money so they can make the investments that truly matter. Who's okay with that? Okay, because that's what we're about. And like I said, I did the Wall Street thing. I had the New York office, I had the downtown office, I had the suit and tie and the mahogany desk and all that fun stuff. But now this is my boardroom. Yes, it is. And it is a beautiful thing, okay? So I don't just teach it, we live it, okay? This is what we've done, this is what we've built. But to try to explain it without a spreadsheet, because uh, that's my love language. If anyone's read, there's actually a sixth love language that's not in that book, it's called spreadsheets. Um, but without using that, I'm gonna explain really quickly what we do, okay? Liz Lemon's gonna explain it better than I can. I can't end up like that. I have gotta make money and save it, and I have to do that thing that rich people do where they turn money into more money. Can you teach me how to do that? With my eyes closed. Oh, good. <laughs> Is that good? Easy enough? Money's easy. Right? We're just going to turn, with my eyes closed, more money into more. And if you don't think I can do that very well, like I said, I'm not going to try to brag about myself. We'll just... Um, and by the way, these are the two dudes who invest all my money. So I literally give them all my money and they turn it into more money. Okay. <laughs> so there we go. All right. That's what we do. Now, my goal today, who feels like their brain is running out their ears and all they can see is like offers and value ladders and stacks and scripts like, okay? We're gonna take a second and step outside of our business, okay? I want, I want to, to create that space so we can get outside for a second and look in because one thing that you need to realize is you are not your business. 
You have your business and then there is you and we've got to create some space. That's what we're gonna do today. What we're not going to do today are cover specific tactics of what you should do quite yet. That would be a tactic. Everyone asks me, Brad, what should I do? My clients hate me because I say, well, that depends. Like, if you tell me that depends one more time, just tell me, okay? There's a difference between tactics. Tactics can be dangerous, okay? I have a four-year-old. She likes to color and cut things out and stick it on the fridge, okay? I let her color, but I don't give her scissors. Does this make sense? That would be, that'd be, kind of, that'd be irresponsible, okay? Tactics are like scissors to a four-year-old if we're missing what comes before, which are principles, okay? A very smart person last night at dinner, Myron, had an amazing conversation with him. He said principles, write this down, get this ready. He said principles are God's automation. Yes, ooh, somebody said yes, okay? So we're gonna learn the principles today. And once we have the principles, the tactics are easy. Guys, investing is so boring and so easy and so autopilot if we understand the principles. Otherwise, it's a lot of work. Okay, so we're gonna get into those. And, and what I want you to leave with is I want, we wanna work on increasing our financial IQ and we wanna be empowered in the conversation of money. That's what I do, okay? Who has had a conversation with an accountant, an attorney, or a financial advisor and, and felt their stomach turn before walking into the room, okay? Who felt uncomfortable while they were there talking? Okay, that's not by accident. Attorneys wear suits on purpose to make you feel small, okay? But we're gonna change that. We're gonna flip the script to where you can walk in and have any conversation about money and feel empowered. Who's ready for that? Okay, let's do it. We're gonna start by acknowledging and understanding this. Everything you think you know about money is wrong. It's a pretty bold statement, right? Here's why. At some point in your life, you realized that this just wasn't for you, right? It might have been in school when you couldn't sit still. It might have been in college when you're like, what is the point of this? It might have been when you were sitting in your cubicle and you realized it was closer to a casket than a, than a job, right? At some point, we just didn't fit in. The problem with money is when we leave this world and we're successful by breaking all the rules that we were told we couldn't break, what are we then told to do with our money? The same thing this guy's told to do. And what's his point? What, why does he save? Why does he invest? What does he work for? Retirement. It's the most dangerous word in the English language. He's working so he can stop. A Couple years ago, who knows Alex? Who's heard of Alex? Okay? He helped me understand myself as an entrepreneur. The word stop to an entrepreneur might as well be a death sentence. Yet that's what all the tactics you're taught about money is aimed at doing for you. This is why you hate those conversations. This is why it doesn't make any sense to you. It's not for you. Just like any, we've been learning about offers and messaging in markets, right? Financial products is no different. Unfortunately, 97% of people in the world our employees. So guess what 97% of the financial advice is created for? Employees. employees. We're gonna fix that today, okay? All right, so you came to this conference, just like I did, to learn <laughs> to make money in your sleep. This is, what, this is why I paid Russell, right? This is why I pay Steven. But the reality of what you're gonna leave with is this. Okay, let, me, let, me, let me explain this for a second, okay? I was told that you can take a dollar and give it to Mark Zuckerberg, right? And then how many does he give you back? Zero. Well, okay. You can buy a Facebook ad, and how many should you get back? Two. 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 Like, if you're bad at it, right? I talk to Steven all the time. He's like, yeah, I'm getting like $11 out of my webinar, and I haven't touched it in 18 months. So if we're bad, we can put a dollar in and get a dollar out, let's say, in a month's period of time. If you're good at it, it should be more like a week, but let's say you're bad at it and it takes you a month. That's a 100% rate of return. And then you do that 12 months out of the year. That's a 1,200% rate of return. 
If I came to you as a financial advisor and said, I'm gonna get you a 1200% rate of return, like I'm going to jail. That's like Ponzi scheme stuff, right? You just learn how to do it. You were literally learning, literally learning to build a money printing machine. Okay, yes, woo, we're excited about that. This is why I study with Steven, okay, is to learn to do this better. So that means rate of return is totally and completely pointless. You ever thought about that before? Okay, so what I wanna tell you is stop trying to find someone else to give your money to. Like just when you invest all this time, effort and energy, blood, sweat and tears and it starts to finally pay off, what are you taught to do? Go take all that money and give it to somebody else in hopes that you might get a 7% rate of return in 40 years. It's, it's insanity, okay? You're taught to give it to someone else's business of which you know nothing and have no control over that is in a market in which you, you know nothing, you don't understand. It's, it was hard enough for me to grow my own dang business, let alone hope that I picked the right one to give my money to. Do you see why you're confused with money? It literally doesn't make any sense, okay? So if this is true, the first thing I want you to understand is you literally have a superpower. You, in this room, if you've made a dollar online or in your business or any other way that's not somebody writing you a paycheck, you have a skill set that nobody has on Wall Street. You are smarter than all of the financial advisors, all of the accountants, and all of the attorneys because you can literally make money. They can't. Okay, and personal development's really fun. Wait till you have money. It gets really fun, the things that you can do. And I wish somebody had told me this a lot earlier. My business, like business, owning and running a business, being an entrepreneur is just, it gets like the, this hook to get you to actually grow and develop as a person, right? Like I wish I had known that. Like my business only grows at the same rate that I'm willing to grow personally. Have you ever thought about that? It is a direct reflection of your willingness to grow. So if return on investment is, is irrelevant, what you need to pay attention to is your return on your, really your most scarce asset, which is your return on attention, okay? So where I want you to start and where I want you to have permission to start, who felt a little guilty coming, spending money and coming here? Who got some grief from loved ones or friends for coming here? Lots of you, right? Okay, I wanna give you permission to say you are in the right room. Because with this superpower that you have and the fact that your wealth will be directly correlated to the ability for you to grow, these are the three most important investments you can make. You are your greatest asset not real estate, not stocks and bonds, not options, nothing external, it's you. And the places that you need to be investing is in your mindsets, your skill sets, and your networks. If you don't have the money that you want, if you don't have the life you want, if you don't have the results you want, you're lacking in one of those three areas. And before anyone comes to me and says, Brad, what should I do with my money? I, ha I, ch I go through this with them. What's holding you back? Is it belief? Can you not see the outcome? Do we need to invest in mindsets? Are you lacking? I mean, the reason why I joined the inner circle is I lacked a skill set of using the interwebs to get people to send me money. So I went and got that skill set, right? And or if you're not gonna do it, you need your network to do it. This is where we start. Now, eventually you'll get tapped out here. Like I cannot join any more masterminds. I do, I have six kids at home, I can't do any more of these, right? So when, when those are tapped out, inside of our business, there's three areas that we need to be looking at investing. In your marketing, your processes, and your people, okay? So we need a framework that supports this. Now, I'm the money guy. I'm the one that's supposed to tell you what to do with your money and where it should go. Do you know where most of mine goes? Well, I have, a, I have an addiction, 
And it's, I mean, I think Devon was talking about blow. It's not that one, but it's only slightly less expensive. It's horsepower. So that's where, uh, unfortunately, a lot of my money goes, but we live what we preach here. That's how much money myself and my two business partners invested into those six things last year. We live what we preach. And then this happened. Did you guys see that correlation? Okay. That's not coincidence. We invested in ourselves, we invested in our business, and we got an amazing outcome, okay? So now, you all have permission. Everyone that raised their hand that felt guilty for coming, stop it. You don't need to. You are your greatest asset and your business is your greatest investment. Who's on board with that? Okay. All right. Well, there's just one problem, okay? The problem is you are your own worst enemy in this game because the skill sets that make you an amazing entrepreneur inherently make you terrible at managing money. Yes? Okay. The hardest thing for me as an entrepreneur is to make mistakes. But we know the faster we make mistakes, the faster we learn. The problem is when you have money, then you have to like way back to the beginning, make it all again, right? It's not the same process. It really isn't. It's a different skill set, okay? But what happens is we get good at making money, this new problem develops. When we have a vacation that we want to go on, or like me, something with a throttle that I want to buy, or a tax bill that we have to pay, we just go make more money, right? I'll just launch another webinar. I'll just do a JV. And instead of living paycheck to paycheck, we end up living product launch to product launch, or webinar to webinar. Has anybody felt that? It's because we didn't grow our skill set. We took the same money understanding and the same financial IQ into a different world and got the same outcome. Okay, so I wanna do an exercise here. Everybody take out your journal, get a fresh sheet of paper, turn the page, and divide that into thirds. So two lines across it that divide it into three sections, okay? And I want everybody to, to really to do this with me, okay? In the top section, it's going to involve math, but it's just addition. Just get your phones out. It'll be okay. We'll get through it. Okay? Get, add up how much money you've made in your lifetime. Just try to estimate. If, you've, if, if you had a job for the last 20 years and you made $50,000, it's a million bucks, right? Just guesstimate what how many years you worked for a salary. If you own a business, you should know roughly what your revenue was, at least close, right? Start adding it up, okay? I, um, while you're doing that, I, actually the, the first presentation on investing that I ever went to was a guy, he says, how to make a million dollars. So I was like, sweet, I'm in. And he came up and uh, started the presentation by saying, here's how to make a million dollars. Go get a job making $50,000 a year and work for 20 years. It's like, oh man, that's not what I, and he was like, oh, you want to make a million dollars now? Yeah, okay, that's different. That's what you're here for. But add that up. How close are we? We got a number yet? Okay. That's what we, that's the money that's coming to our life. Who's surprised by how big that number is? It's, it's kind of, it's kind of a lot of money, right? Now in the next box, this is what I want you to do. Write down your bank account balance. <laughs> Write down your investment account balance. Is there a gap there for anybody? As you look at this, how does that make you feel? Lacking a skill set, depressed. It sucks a little bit, doesn't it? Okay, I have paid more money to coaches to punch me in the face than just about anything else. That's what I wanna do for a second. Really look at that and internalize, look how much, and I guarantee you the number you wrote at the top is a lot smaller than what's really come into your life. And what do we have to show for it? Okay, my mission, what I wanna do is I wanna reverse that. 
Because the more money that you're able to keep, the more of a difference you can make. So our real problem is yes, we're our own worst enemy, but what really gets us as entrepreneurs is our real problem is we are hunted by a wolf that we cannot see. Who's felt that? And the interesting part about this is you've probably been told or you tell yourself that if I just make a little bit more money, it'll go away. It's not true. I've had conversations with people like Russell Brunson who says, the more you make, the closer he gets. Because now, for Russell, we were talking about this last night at dinner, for Russell, it's not just Russell, it's Russell plus 350 families that rely on him, plus thousands of business owners whose livelihoods rely on him. Do you think he feels some pressure? Okay. This is the real problem in money, is if we lack the skill set to create certainty and abundance financially for us, this will always hunt us. Okay? And again, if you think that making more money is going to change this, it's not. It's only through changing our skill set, through becoming somebody different. Now, unfortunately, I have some bad news for you. Your business is terminally ill and on life support. It is not worth anything. Oh, but Brad, you just told me that's what I should be investing in. I'm confused. Who's confused now that I put this up here? Okay, here's some interesting statistics. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is meant to be the strongest, most stable co uh, companies in the United States. Yes? Has anybody heard of that, right? That's supposed to track like the core of the country. Of the original companies that were put together in that index 100 years ago, do you know how many are still there? One, General Electric. So if the most successful companies have not been able to do it, are you gonna be able to? Here's other stats. In the S&P 500, in 1965, the average tenure of a company to stay in that index was 33 years. By 1990, it was 20 years. By 2026, that's going to shrink to 14 years. 50% of those companies will not be in that index 10 years from now. Here are some, here are some billion dollar companies that didn't exist 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Click funnels. I don't know, are they a billion dollar company? Oh, maybe. Anyway, they didn't exist 10 years ago. Facebook only existed 12 years ago. Airbnb, Uber, Instagram, Fitbit, Twitter, Spotify, Dropbox, Hulu. These are all billion dollar companies that didn't exist 10 years ago. Things are changing very quickly and your business will be irrelevant at some point. Because what you do, you think about people that sold whips for horse and buggies and then the car came along. Okay. So if this is true, what do we do? We have to start keeping the money that we make. Yes? Yes. 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 Hey, we want to make a lot of it. And that's fun to put up gross revenue numbers. But if we're not keeping it, it doesn't really matter. Okay? But I do have some good news. Okay? I do have some good news. It's not your fault. This is your business. Okay, I have six kids. They have all at one, well, I have six, one on the way. I have five actual kids. And they have all at some point thrown this temper tantrum. Who's, right? Who has felt like this has been their business at one point or another? <laughs> that it is a whiny, snot-nosed little brat that's just asking for cash every time you turn around. Yes? Who's ever felt that once they got their business running, they ended up holding the tiger by the tail, wondering how they got themselves in this position? Yes? Okay. I'm going to tell you how to fix this. Okay, again, I'm going to tell you principles, not tactics. There's lots of tactics behind this, okay? 
Stephen was voxing me all last week, like, are you going to tell him this? Oh, remember that calculation? We did you do that? I was like, no, I can't do that on stage. I just have to show principles, okay? Okay? But um, I want to talk to you about a concept we call King's Cash, okay? One of my mentors, Garrett White, um, talks about this quite a bit too. We um, got the name from him, actually. But I want to ask you this question. In your business, who gets paid first? Okay, in your business, those are all right answers. Guess who gets paid first in my business? I do. Who is the most important person in your business? You are. But do we act like it? We've been told totally wrong. We've been told we need a bootstrap. We've been told we need a hustle. We've been told we need a grind, right? We have the business that we created. You guys are in charge. You guys get to set the rules. You just set the wrong set of rules. And this is what we call king's cash, okay? The concept of king's cash goes like this. First, we recognize that we are the king or queens. That's great, right? You are the king or queen, and you are going to eat first, and you are going to pay yourself first. And here's how we do it. Well, yeah, here's how we do it. Every month, I factor in what I need to run my lifestyle. It could be $3,000 a month, it could be $5,000 a month, it could be $40,000 a month, just to, to where you don't have to think about money for the next 30 days. This isn't extravagance, this isn't all the extras, this is just keep the lights on, be comfortable, and I don't have to worry about how many times I eat out or this, act. like, write that number down. How much you would need to cover and just be comfortable for the month. That amount of money needs to go in your bank account on the first of the month because you get paid first. Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking is, well, my business doesn't make that much money. Okay, that's fine. And we do that for three months. And then at the end of three months, we look at our bank account balance. If we're doing things correctly, it should be positive. And again, there's tactics here that I need to fill the gap with that I won't be able to today. But the idea is, is we take that amount of money that we have, we leave a reserve in our business because we calculate the same number, right? I know how much I need to run for a month. I know how much my business needs to run for a month. I leave three months reserves in my business and all the rest of the money, whose money is that? It's mine because I'm the king and I'm going to eat. And I pay myself every quarter. The money that I take every month is my paycheck. That's what I get paid for coming and working every day in the business. Who's had the thought before like, man, this would be easier. I should just go get a job. I'd make more money. Like, is anybody at that stage of their business? Right, okay. That amount to cover your living expenses is to keep the noise down so you can go and work. The money you make every quarter, that's your king's cash. That's what you get paid for owning the business. Okay? But I can already hear half the room being like, Brad, I don't make that much money. Brad, this is really hard. I can't do that. That's all I hear is excuses. Because the reality is, so I actually, I was talking, uh, who knows Brandon Poulin with Lady Boss, right? Awesome guy, one of my one of my heroes, he's amazing. But we were having this conversation and every time I'd say, okay, dude, it's time to implement, let's go, let's start doing stuff. He's like, yeah, great, except I got this thing. I go, all right, three months later, it's time to go. Yeah, okay, yeah, but now we got this next thing. And there was always an excuse as to why it wasn't yet time for him to start taking King's Cash, for him to start paying himself, for him to start worrying about his personal wealth. And so I finally said, hey, Brandon, this has been really fun talking to you, but I can't work with lazy people. I'm sorry. And if you know Brandon, you know how he took that, right? <laughs> and what I hear when people say that they can't do this is you as an entrepreneur have become lazy. You heard Stephen's story. How did he get to Funnel Hacking Live? Did he say, well, I don't have any money? No, he put his entrepreneur hat on and solved the problem. But then what happens when money starts coming in, we defer to money and we let money start solving our problems. Does this make sense? 
This is what you're doing to yourselves. So if you say, I can't pay myself that amount of money every month, it's saying, well, I'm letting money solve all of my problems and I'm gonna be lazy. But I want you to go through this exercise and write down how much money I need and then start setting goals around King's Cash so that we now have a problem to solve. Then we put our entrepreneur hat on and we go to work. And we go to work building a business. We create it from the beginning, okay? I'm, I know that there are a bunch of you out there that still says, no, it's, it's not working. I don't believe you. Who still doesn't believe me? Come on. Bunch of liars, you don't believe me. I'm going to play this message. Can we un unmute this? Okay. I, took, I, took, I take all my clients through this. I took Steve through this a little while ago. It sounds really simple right now, but that's, that's the deceiving part about principles. Principles seem too easy. Like the truth is simple, right? But when we take those principles and apply them, we know that it's truth when it changes our life. So here's a message that Steven said he could play that he left me on a Voxer a few weeks ago after, whoop, after, come on Voxer, after we made his first King's Cash distribution. So I'm gonna see if this will play. It is amazing the mentorship happens when you start taking those draws, man. Holy crap. I saw that hit the account and then it dropped a little, you know, obviously dropped in the business account. And I, for some reason, it's like, I don't know, man. <laughs> anyway, it's exciting. It's super exciting. I am like ready to crush. I cannot wait to, for, for, for next week. And little tiny things, the little nuances to uh, improve the product or improve the funnel, or whatever it might be, like that I wasn't really getting after. Like I'm getting after it, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so powerful, it's such a big deal. Uh, taking that, taking that quarterly King's cash. Holy crap! It's really exciting, man. Anyway, just want to say thanks. So it's, really, it's been really, really impactful. Um, it's also taught me how fat my other business is because there's no way we could take a draw from right now. It's too low. There's no cash reserves. I'm probably spending too much money in the business and now I have like a I have like a motivation I'm like crap I gotta go we gotta trim the hedges a little bit here <laughs> right let's go trim down the trim down the, the fat a little bit on this so that I can go you know get paid more and instead of like me like getting paid like oh salary you like that just keeps us afloat but man I get paid on that quarterly so and anyway, I just want to say thanks because it's a massive deal it's a massive deal even if it doesn't sound like it okay because I believe this to be absolutely true. If you're not getting paid a lot in your business, it will not grow. You heard Steven say it, as soon as he took that King's cash, his entire vantage point of the business changed because he got paid. And then he was looking at things. Guys, he just spent a whole day talking to you about marketing techniques that got him paid, right? He ignored the rest and implemented the things that got him paid. That's what drives behavior. That's what drives motivation. And I want you to start putting that, obviously there's tactics that, we'll, that we can cover, but the principle is what I want you to get, okay? Who's fired up? Is this? Yes, okay? All right. Now, this is probably the hardest part, okay? Russell, or not Russell, um, Stephen has, and I'll never call him Steve, man, dude. You shouldn't, I'm sorry, it's Steven. Steve, okay, talks about you've got to take on this identity of being a marketer, right? This is an identity shift as much as it is building a skill set, okay? This is why I work with Steve. This is why I work with Russell. This is why I work with people because I'm still trying to take on that identity. There's other identity shifts I've had to go through, like working with Alex Charfin to really help me understand myself and take that identity as an entrepreneur, Okay? I worked with Garrett White to take on this concept. If I'm going to lead a movement, I need to be a leader. If I'm going to have employees, I need to be able to lead. And I had to start telling myself and learning those skills and taking on that identity. Before any of this will work, you have to take on the identity that you are a capitalist and that you are going to get paid. Okay? And this is an identity. Who, who out there thinks they're bad with money? Okay, if you don't think so, look at your sheet. <laughs> Everyone look at your sheet. Now, who's not good with money? 
okay, this is an identity that we've got to start shifting, okay? You can either feel guilty about that and you can avoid it. Who's ever like not opened their bank account balance because they just didn't want to see what was going on? (laughs) We have to stop that and get committed. Just like anything, you're going to suck at first. You're not going to have enough money. You're not going to make your distributions. You're not going to hit your numbers. You're not going to understand. You're going to sound and feel really dumb. But if you stay committed to learning, just like you learn marketing, just like you learn entrepreneurship, just like you learn leadership, money and this skill set can be learned. So instead of asking the question, who can I find to give my money to, you should be asking the question, who can I find to teach me money? Do you see the difference in that question? That's what I want you to understand. That's why the, the entire financial system is broken is they will not teach you because then they're irrelevant. Okay? Now, once you get paid, someone else is there with their handout. Yes? Yes. Okay? So this is with that king's cash that you now have in your bank account, your number one destroyer of wealth is Uncle Sam. Okay? And I believe it's your patriotic duty to pay the least amount in taxes that you possibly can. Thank you. Okay. This a couple of years ago, like I only watch, this is just pure like enjoy, like I only watch the presidential debates for entertainment and Donald Trump has delivered, yes? But this is a statement I want us all to listen to. Or maybe he doesn't want the American people, all of you watching tonight, to know that he's paid nothing in federal taxes because the only years that anybody's ever seen were a couple of years when he had to turn them over to state authorities when he was trying to get a casino license and they showed he didn't pay any federal income tax. So if he's smart. paid zero, that means zero for troops, zero for vets, zero for schools or so health. Think, think what you want about Donald Trump, but that makes him smart, okay? So in addition to, <laughs> yes, in addition to getting paid, you need to learn how to keep your money out of Uncle Sam. Well, how are we going to do that? Okay, this is where you can get out. This is where I'm going to get into a little bit of tactics. Okay, there's this, this group of islands called the Cook Islands over here. And get a pen and write really quick. All we have to do is go through this very simple. And <laughs> This is what we're told, right? The taxes are this difficult and hard. Who like has a physical reaction to the word tax planning? Yeah, right? That's because you think it's this. I want you to start thinking about taxes this way. There's about 10,000 pages in the US tax code. About 10 of them tell you how much tax you have to pay. It basically says everything you make is taxable and here's a bunch of tables to do your calculations. So what's in the other 9,990 pages? All the ways you cannot pay taxes. It is a treasure map. It really is, it's a game. But who's it written for? Business owners and investors. That's who it's written for. So the reason why you know nothing about the tax code is it's not written for you because your advisor is talking to you as an employee. And then Congress felt bad, and so they slipped in this one little section called Section 401k, and for some reason that's all that anybody can pay attention to. That's for the employees. That's the bone they threw the employees. The rest of it is for us to not pay taxes, okay? Who's more excited about income taxes all of a sudden? Yes, okay? So we need to get committed to learning to, and you don't go read the tax code. Please don't add it to your Amazon cart. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is we've got to start learning to ask the right questions, okay? All right. Now, there's four total things that will destroy your king's cash. The IRS is one of them, and it's the biggest one. But there are three others. Second is predators and creditors. Okay, we all know that. We live in the most litigious society, markets. Okay, we can't, remember, what's our most, what's more important than return on investment? Did you guys write it down? Return on attention. If you're worried about what's going on with with Donald Trump's trade embargoes with China because that's affecting your 401k, where's your attention? Not on your cash printing machine, right? So we can't have markets destroy wealth, nor can we have inflation. We need a way to protect against all four of these. 
Who feels like they don't have one of, at least one of these bases covered? Yeah, we need to get them all covered, okay? All right, that's what we call protect, okay? We talked about produce, that's your superpower. That's what no one else can do. You make money. We talked about protecting it by, pay, by setting up a system to get paid, King's Cash, protecting against Uncle Sam and the other three wealth destroyers. Now, we're gonna talk about what you all thought you were coming here to learn, which is profit, which is make money, make it grow, right? This is what you thought. I'm like, I got four minutes left, and I'm talking about what you thought you really wanted, okay? Now, I want to really sink this point in because now you're saying, okay, cool, he's going to tell me about like what stocks to buy. Or he's going to tell me where I should put my money. All right, I've, I'm going to walk through an exercise. I've got a time machine, and we're going to go back to 1980 when Apple went public. Who wants to give me some money to go buy Apple stock when it went public? Okay, all right, so back then it was $22 a share when it IPO'd. Okay, so give me 2,200 bucks, I'll go buy you 100 shares. Cool? Okay, 2018, end of 2018, that would be worth $1.1 million. Who feels good about this decision? Yeah, this is what we're told, right? This is the key to, to investing, right? That took us 38 years. Oh man, that was a really long time. Who wants to wait that long, right? It's really not that impressive. All right, well, what about Amazon? right? Amazon's way better choice. Let's do Amazon. Who wants to go back to 1997 and invest in Amazon with me? Surefire win, right? $2.4 million instead of just 1.1. Now we did even better. Gosh, that was still 21 years. That's a long time. Remember, I'm not an employee. I don't want to like wait and then retire later on. Who's kind of surprised by this? Like all of a sudden investing doesn't seem so cool. All right, this is my webinar. Guys, I implement what I'm telling you guys, and I run a webinar. I had a week where I spent $13.96 on ads, and I got $19.88 back. Doesn't sound all that cool, does it? Until you think about that only took a week. And then if I did that, if I took the $19.88 and bought more ads with it next week and did the same thing, it only takes me 19 weeks to get a million dollars. Okay, this is why you see people get two Comic Clubs awards in like no amount of time. This is what's happening. Okay, so before we go invest, I need to ask you a question. I will stop you and I will go back through and say mindset, skill sets, network, right? Marketing, systems, and people. And I will ask you are you paying yourself King's Cash? Right? Are we keeping as much of it as we can? And now if we get to that question, we still have money. Like, okay, now we can talk about investing. I'm gonna ask you, what do you want? Do you want more money or more time? Okay. So in that box, I left you a third box there. Was that hurting anyone else's brain why I left a box there and didn't finish it out? Yeah, oh, that's called an open loop, right? So what do you want? Now take... Box number two, your bank account, if there's anything there. And I had you write down a number of what, how much you need every month to keep the lights on. Divide those two numbers. Divide box number two by that number and write the answer in box number three. Are you guys following me? If I have $100,000 in the bank and I need $10,000 a month, that's 10 months. How much, how much of your time do you own right now? Who owns less than a well, I won't have, who owns more than a year? What's the formula again? Your box number two, divided by the amount you need every month. Ooh, I just have over a year. Just over a year, she gets to raise her hand. Okay, I have more than a year, okay? Who has more than five? 10, 20. Couple people. Okay, is this sobering? You said you wanted time, but how much of your time do you own? And again, this is the wolf that hunts us. It's really, it sounds really fun. I'm over time, but they're not gonna come get me off stage, so I'm gonna keep talking. This sounds really fun 
to be the attractive character of a business, right? But all businesses have a half-life. They're all worthless at some point. So that wolf that hunts us is the knowledge that we are the one, no matter how automated our business is, no matter how passive, passive is such a lie, no matter how automated our business is, we are the ones that have to wake up every day and push it forward, right? So if we want to invest and we want more time, the thing that gets us there is this. Think about this. In any sport, the ultimate achievement is a championship, right? And no matter how good you are, the question is always asked, have you won a championship, right? Doesn't matter how many, how many games you win, what stats you rack up, if you don't have a championship, you're always lacking. Same thing happens in your business. No matter how much gross revenue, no matter how many stages you're on, no matter how impressive things look, What's your Super Bowl ring? Tom Brady. Tom Brady has a lot of them. Inside of your business, what's, what's your Super Bowl ring? It's cash flow. What allows you to own your time infinitely, my hand didn't go down at 20 years or 30 years or 40 years or 50 years or 60 years or 70 years or 80 years because I... The only thing I invest my money outside of my business for is to create cash flow. Because cash flow gives me time. And as soon as my cash flow exceeds that number of what I need every month, I'm free. That's it. And this is important because I needed to get free from my business. Not just free from a job, not just free so I could, I needed to get free from my business because four years ago, I was in a situation where I had to make a very difficult decision. I was part of another company. We had a partnership and I was making really good money, half a million dollars a year or, or more, but I knew I had something more. I knew I had this message and I had to figure out how to get it out. But leaving, to be able to do that required me to cut ties with friends. And I went nine months where it would have been illegal for me to produce revenue because of licensing that, was, that, that had to stay behind and I had a waiting period. Who could leave their active source of income now for nine months and grow a business? A okay, couple of you can. On top of that, I wrote a check to Russell Brunson for $25,000. I wrote a check to Garrett White for 10,000 and then another one for 40,000. And then I wrote two other checks totaling $50,000 in that nine month time period without the ability to generate income. I was a madman, yes? <laughs> but I could do those things because, oh, the thing says, please wrap up, fine. I could do that because I was free, even from my business, okay? Now, these principles sound, well, not like what you hear. Think about this and out, that, think about an iceberg, right? What you see in the investing world is what sits above the surface, that little 10%. That is not true wealth. True wealth is what sits below the surface, the 90% that nobody sees, that's the conversation of money that you need to enter, okay? This is what you need to be committed to, okay? I'm gonna roll real quick here. Wow, I have a lot left, but I'm gonna go fast. Okay, I hope you're a little bit more confident. Who's more confident knowing these things? Okay, yes, but I don't feel like that's enough. I need to help make you certain, okay? And what's missing, the last element you need is you need a game plan. Even Michael Jordan would not have stepped on the court without a game plan, right? Okay? So no matter how much you increase your IQ, you need your game plan. And it consists of three elements. One is you need your target. We have that. You are your number one asset. You are the king and you're going to get paid and we're gonna work for that Super Bowl ring. That's our target, right? Okay, number two is we need a system, okay? No one would ever run a business without understanding what they wanna do for the next 10 years what they're gonna accomplish in the next year and what they want to accomplish over the next 90 days. Who has that with their money? 
I know I have a client out there somewhere. Raise your hand. Stop her. Where are you at? Okay, there's some. Okay, so we need to create these for our money in our business. We need to start identifying what's broken, what gaps we have, what resources we need, and what actions we're going to take. Because the worst thing to happen is to have your, your business grow and outpace your own financial IQ. That gap is what leads to the gap on your piece of paper, okay? And then lastly, we've got to solidify into this identity of who we are. It is okay to get paid. It is okay to make insane amounts of money. Because what I believe is a principle that we, in, our, in our world we call dollars follow value. Okay? So start identifying that you are somebody who can learn and control money that you are a capitalist and that's okay. Because, and then I'm just wrap up with this. We believe this identity so strong and this purpose of money so strong that we've printed our saying on all of our shirts, rise up. Rise up is taking on the identity part. Rise up is doing the work. Rise up is taking ownership so that we can live free. And we believe in this so much, we print it on the back of every shirt that we send out. We ask everybody to identify who they are, put it on and go do something that, they, that resonates with them, that moves them and take a picture. So I just wanna end with at this question, who here is ready to rise up and live free? Yes, let's do it. Thank you everybody.